Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah, faithfulness. I think a topic that is incredibly close to my heart. And just even thinking again with the BAS, hey, what we're doing. Uh, just the faithfulness of God to, to mothers, to unborn babies, to born babies. Uh, the faithfulness of God is just seen in so many different things. And, um, you know, even thinking as Cheryl was just uh, talking about A.W. Toza. I think one of the things, you know, that A.W. Toza says is, you know, the most important thing about a person is not uh, what he or she may say or do, but what he or she may believe in his heart to be true about God. And, uh, and to me, when I think about my journey and the faithfulness of God specifically, you know, uh, I might have been able to say that God is faithful because that's the right thing to say. Uh, but there was very little heart connection with what that actually meant and how that would actually play out in my life. And, uh, you know, when I was, well, preparing for this message sort of happened fairly late in the week. Uh, but as I was going through the week, that was actually what God was speaking to me about, about His faithfulness. And it started off with a scripture that I was reading in my quiet time, and I couldn't for the life of me remember uh, where it was for a couple of days when I was thinking back. But the scripture in my mind said that God delights in faithfulness. And uh, now there's probably a scripture somewhere that might say that. But as I was trying to look back, you know, this was yesterday morning, I think. I was trying to look back, man, where's that scripture? And I got my concordance, I got the computer out, trying to find this particular scripture. Now, I always had, has, had this, uh, this definition in my heart of faithfulness that basically says God loves us always. Uh, and that to me is a fairly good description of what faithfulness is. But uh, as I was looking back, sort of speed reading through my Bible, I found a scripture in Micah 7.18 where it actually says that God delights in unfailing love. And, uh, and so to me, that is somewhat similar than, than faithfulness. And I think in my own divergent mind, I thought there must have been a scripture that God delights in faithfulness. But really what, what the Bible was saying, that God delights in unfailing love. And uh, as Sean and I were sort of going back and forth about having a message, no message, I felt God actually said, Ari, I've been highlighting faithfulness to you this week. And I didn't necessarily right then and there have a message, but I, I felt God just put some things uh, in my heart for tonight related to his faithfulness. And uh, I just felt to very quickly start off with my, my own story. Uh, a lot of people here know that, some people don't. Uh, but I, uh, like I, I come from, from Holland, a uh, great little country, uh, wonderful people. Uh, hence, you know, look here, another wonderful person. But I wasn't always wonderful, but I grew up in the church. And, um, and my family, uh, not broken, but fairly dysfunctional. Yeah, I had a, an old man who, who struggled with drinking uh, quite badly from the moment I was born. Uh, my dad was an alcoholic my whole life that I was alive. And, uh, and so uh, my brother had some, uh, some learning difficulties. And there was just, I would say, some attention, attention deficit in my life. Uh, very young uh, on in my life, I noticed a lot of broken promises uh, that were taking place in my life as it related to my dad uh, because of sometimes the, the circumstances of his, of his personal addiction. And, uh, and from a young age, I, I sort of pushed out my family or I stepped out from the family, but I hardened my heart towards my family. And, uh, and basically what happened, you know, a lot of the choices that people were making that I didn't agree with, I started making myself and uh, you know it started quite young on you know I became quite uh, I would say independent and resistant stubborn yeah sort of becoming my own boss uh, internally uh, and that came out later in life externally uh, I remember saying to myself I'm never going to drink because of I saw the difficulty that it brought in my family but um, you know sort of mid-teens uh, I was introduced to alcohol uh, not that I didn't know about alcohol, I just never had alcohol myself and started drinking. And, uh, and very quickly, I started drinking way too much. Uh, I had no break, so to speak. Uh, sort of dropped out of school. I didn't really like school. Uh, went into the army for national service. Uh, that's where I was introduced to soft drugs that led into hard drugs. 
and uh, and so sort of get on this journey where uh, where I sort of ruled my own life and my own life wasn't going very well. I made a lot of poor choices as it relates to relationship with other people, how I treated my parents, uh, and, and basically lived really quite independently and, and alone. And I think because of all of the choices that I was making, at one point I hit quite rock bottom. I had a really bad experience uh, with hard drugs uh, back in Holland. And uh, I mean, make a long story short, after about six months feeling really, really bad, and, and being quite depressed, I, I prayed a prayer, uh, and I said to God, if you are real, then please reveal yourself to me. And, uh, you know, when I think about the faithfulness of God, uh, you know, that particular moment, no angels in the room, nothing happened necessarily that was of great significance to the bare eye. Uh, but, you know, I do know God enough now that I know that when I ask him, you know, to reveal himself to me, whether I see it straight away, whether I don't, he, he is at work. He is waiting for moments to be invited in because, you know, his faithful love uh, has no end, right, to me as a person, to us as people, and he waits for opportunities uh, when we've walked away to actually being given permission to come right back in, and uh, I remember making a decision to go back to church, uh, started going back to church, and uh, nothing really changed too drastically, uh, wasn't really being discipled. But uh, all along, I think uh, God had a plan, had a purpose uh, to bring me to a certain place. And, uh, and so I came eventually to Australia as a backpacker, as Shirley was saying. I was introduced to youth with a mission and uh, ended up doing a DTS in 1998, what is, gosh, it's almost 18 years ago. And uh, and on my discipleship training school, I, uh, I met God. I really met God. And actually, for the first time in my life, uh, I surrendered to God after a couple of weeks in my DTS, uh, realized that I'd been incredibly independent, rebellious, stubborn, and all of the above, and that I needed to surrender my life. And if my life was going to change, that's what was needed. And so I did. I surrendered to God uh, I found myself crying out to God on a regular basis the first couple of weeks, getting my life right with God, with repentance and all of these things, and sort of started moving forward. But I realized in my particular journey, my personal journey, that I struggled with aspects of the character of God. Uh, people would say certain things, and I would know them in my head to be true, but uh, my life uh, found it very hard to sort of line up with that. And people would say, well, God is a provider. And I said, sure, God is a provider. I know he's a provider. But then when push really came to shove, I, it wasn't really there. I would go back to my independent ways because really I didn't fully trust God. Yeah, I didn't think that God really was who he was. And a part of that was because I was very faithless myself. I wasn't a faithful person. I was actually quite unfaithful in the way that I lived life. And, uh, and so for me to, to grasp what God was like was quite hard. And I remember this one time, and really crying out to God, God, I want to know you better. That God spoke this particular scripture into my mind. And it is in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. And uh, I would say it's probably one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. I mean, people that know me, I say that a lot. I have lots of favorite scriptures in the Bible, but this definitely in the in the top 100 somewhere, yeah, but first, or 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, and I might read verse 12 too, or even verse 11, I'll start in verse 11, it is a trustworthy statement, for if we died with him, we will also live with him, if we endure, we will also reign with him, if we deny him, he also denies us, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. For he cannot deny himself. And I remember looking at that scripture, and it was like scales fell from my eyes. It was all of a sudden, I had this revelation, even if I'm faithless towards God, God remains faithful towards me, because he cannot be any different. He cannot deny himself. You know, he cannot say one thing and do another thing. God actually is incredibly faithful as it relates to who he is and actually displaying that on a consistent basis. And it really changed something in my thinking. It was all of a sudden something at home. So my goodness, 
God actually has always been faithful to me. And all of a sudden, I started looking back. I don't know if anybody else does that. But I start looking back on my life, and all of a sudden, I see signposts. I see different moments where God all of a sudden showed His faithfulness, where He protected me from things uh, that could have potentially been disastrous, things, choices that I made where God stepped in, yeah, where He gave a certain way out that I chose that way and it, it changed things and it, things that might have happened didn't happen. And all of a sudden I see the faithfulness of God in all these different ways. And it was this one scripture that God spoke into my spirit. And uh, I mean, it didn't change everything. Uh, I remember a couple of years later, uh, I don't know if anybody else has this. You feel like you've got it all together. And then all of a sudden God comes on the scene and you're like, ooh, I don't have it quite all together. And uh, I was in a meeting. I think it was a leaders meeting that I was in. And we're talking about God. And at one point we're waiting on the Lord. Is there anything that God wants to say to us? And uh, I remember just waiting on the Lord. And I, I didn't feel too much coming through. And somebody else comes to me and said, all right, I have a scripture for you. And uh, it's a scripture from Psalm 27, verse 10. And uh, it says that even though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will lift me up or take me in. And I wasn't necessarily thinking that at the moment, but that's what I'd been processing. Issues related to acceptance by God, being a son of God. You know, you hear these scriptures, how great is the love that the Father has lavished on us, that we are called children of God. And again, that was a scripture that I knew was true, but all of a sudden it hit home. The scripture just got spoken into my spirit, that even though my father and my mother forsake me, because one of the things that I'd been struggling with for so long was that particular issue. As a kid growing up, I felt lonely. I felt isolated. I felt somewhat forsaken. And God says, no, Never forsaken you. Psalm 27, verse 10. Even though your father and mother forsake you, the Lord will take you in. And there was this sense of adoption that I felt, uh, this acceptance, no matter where I had been and where I came from, that God actually uh, spoke acceptance into my life. And uh, as I was just preparing uh, the message, you know, I was just thinking, you know, in what different ways does God actually... Uh, reveal His faithfulness to us, to me personally. Uh, you know, the first one that came to my mind is that God keeps us from falling. And uh, the scripture that came to mind was in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And that's another one of my favorite scriptures. Uh, we can look it up. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. But it talks about that no temptation has overtaken you or has tempted you such as is common to man. Um, so no temptation has overtaken you as such as is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. And just thinking about the faithfulness of God... That God is a holy God, He wants me to live a holy life, and so He really doesn't want me to do things that are not right. And so when temptation comes, uh, God is faithful to actually give something that will help me, if I choose it, to get out, get out of this temptation. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that He is faithful, that He will provide a way out, yeah, and I so often felt in the past that I was stuck, that I couldn't do certain things, but the faithfulness of God actually helps me to be able to find a way because He shows me the way out. You know, the temptation might be here, and God might show me something over there. You know, a scripture in, I just have my little notebook here. Just got that. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3, also talks about this. Second Thessalonians a little bit down the track from where we just were. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful, and He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. And that encourages me. You know that when temptation comes, no matter how strong it is, no matter what my background is, when temptation comes, yeah, 
God provides a way out for me not to fall into the temptation. Now, that's faithfulness. He really wants me to walk rightly before Him. Now, another area that came to my mind was provision. God is faithful in provision. You know, and provision can come in many ways. But I was thinking of a story about finances. I remember this one time, uh, I think it was either the first DTS or the second DTS that I got to lead. And uh, we... Uh, we were going into a time of offering because we were trusting God for finances, for outreach, a little bit like we did tonight. And uh, we needed a fair bit of finances still, and I, I needed finances too. Like the outreach, I think, at the time was $3,300, and I had $2,500. I remember this really clearly. So in my head, I don't know if anybody else does this, but in my head, very practically, okay, I'm $800 short. We're going to have a time of giving. I am in need. And uh, I was the leader of the school, and I remember we all went to sit in a circle, and uh, I, re I remember it so clearly. I said, okay, guys, this is important. We really want to trust God for breakthrough. Let's just wait on the Lord and see what He says. Let's just wait on God. And you know what? It's all about obedience. If God speaks to you, we just need to do what He tells us to do. And, uh, you know, you might not have money to give. God might want you to give something else, but it's all about this aspect of hearing and obeying, and that really releases the generosity of God. I mean, I knew it all. I said it really well. And uh, so we all bow our heads in prayer. I pray this prayer, and we're waiting on the Lord, and God says, Ari, I want you to give it all to this person that you have. $2,500, I want you to give it to this person. And so here am I, pragmatic as I am, uh, 3,300 minus 25. Hundred is eight hundred dollars that I need. You ask me to give away twenty five hundred dollars. I need like thirty three hundred dollars. Doesn't add up. Doesn't make sense. You know this question is that really you got? So I sat there, didn't do anything. I waited, and I waited, and I waited. And this offering time, nothing was happening. Everybody was looking around and sitting and wondering. And uh, I'm like, man, what's going on? And I think I did even a little pep talk. I said, guys, if God is speaking to you uh, to do something. You know, this is, this is your time. And God says, Ari, I've spoken to you. $2,500 that you have, you need to give that away. And so I wrote it on a piece of paper because I didn't have it in my hand. I wrote it on a piece of paper. I got off my little, I was on a, sitting on a bar stool. And I got off my little bar stool. And I walked towards the person that I felt to give it to. Sort of across, I think it was this way. Sort of across the room. And I give this piece of paper to this person. I turn around. And as I turn around, somebody else stands up. I can see it in, a, in the corner of my eye. I said, great, maybe my obedience sort of got things moving. Yeah, and uh, it's like sometimes God looks at the leader, isn't it? And I sat down, and this person had walked right up to me, was right in front of me, just looks at me, gives me a check, okay? And uh, I said, thank you very much. So I opened the check, and it was a check of 3,000 Canadian dollars that at the time was 3,300 Australian dollars. And I was like, you know, this person must have already written the check because they followed me. Uh, they didn't know necessarily what I was going to give. And I think about this, somebody did. Somebody did know. And, uh, and that was God. God knew. God knew. Yeah. And I realized very clearly again, new revelation, that God actually knows what we, what we need. He actually knows our needs. He actually knows the situation that we're in, and He longs to provide accordingly, whether it be this area, that area. It's not just finances. For me, it was just a story of finances. Yeah? And God is actually very capable of meeting our needs. Uh, he, he is a God who longs to provide. And I was doing a quick calculation again today. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I'm a wine -wimer. Uh I'm not a millionaire. But God spoke to me. Uh, this was about 17 years, 16 years ago, I think. He said, Ari, I want you to know you're a millionaire. I was like, sure. And he said, I'm just not going to give it to you all at once. I'm just not going to give it to you all at once. And I actually, just today again, very quickly added it up. And I think at least over the last 18 years, God has provided at least, I think, $200,000 dollars for me to be able to do the call of God. And that's just me as an individual. That's just me. Yeah, I've traveled around the world. I've done of these things, as God has said. Yeah, and I think this whole aspect that God wants to prove Himself faithful 
in the area of actually looking after us. Yeah, and that's again not just finances. There are things yeah, that, that we sometimes run into, situations where we need God to come through for us. Another area that I was thinking about is faithful related to the future or his promises. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24, just one chapter back or two chapters back from where we were. Faithful is he who calls you and he will also bring it to pass. And he desires for us to really walk into our purposes. And I believe personally, guys, from a very young age, I was called to be a missionary and God had a plan for my life. Then I made a whole bunch of stupid, like I would say, really stupid choices uh, that really caused me to sort of, a little bit like Jonah, okay? Different direction. Uh, but God is very faithful. He doesn't easily give up on us, does he? And, uh, and he has a plan for our lives, and he's really committed to get us back to that plan, yeah? Now, ultimately, he doesn't force us, but I think that God continuously tries to get us back to that place to actually walk in the purposes that he has for us, no matter where we come from, Yeah? I think I said it a bunch of weeks ago. I used to be a bit of a stuffer-upper. Uh, I have no, no credentials to say, well, God, I deserve to be in the place that I am. And I don't think anybody is yeah, sitting here in this room. You know, if we would get what we deserve, this room would be scarily empty. Yeah? Uh, but God has given us because He is faithful. Yeah? We, we have this day because He is faithful. He walks us into our purposes because He is faithful. And... Uh, and the promises of God, yeah, uh, are promises that he wants to bring about. And when I was thinking about the faithfulness of God, see, God will always hold up his end of the bargain. As it relates to the calling of God upon your life and the purposes of God for your life, the faithfulness of God will always hold up his end of the bargain. He will never, yeah, never let that fall. He, he has this incredible desire for us to, to connect with the purposes that he created us for. Yeah, and I, like I said, I had a big gap in my journey where I wasn't following God. And when I said yes to God, He was really, really committed to me to come back to the place where He really wants me to be. And um, I love that about God. I love that. Yeah, that He doesn't necessarily look at our track record. Yeah, He is really committed to us to be everything that, that we can be and that He believes we can be. And so He is committed to our future. He is committed, committed to His promises. Another one, He is faithful to forgive, and that's really connected to the previous one that I mentioned. He loves to forgive. He loves to forgive. He's faithful in love. Yeah, forgiveness and love are very closely connected, but he is faithful to forgive or faithful in love, and that's where I come back to the definition of faithfulness. God loves us always. He is unchanging in his love. He's made a decision to love, and he, de he delights to love us. He delights in his faithful love towards us. And I love that. The security that that brings yeah, in my life, and I hope in all of our lives, the, the, the consistency of God's love brings in, incredible security in my life, brings incredible security as it relates to what he's calling me to do. And, uh, and I think it's something for us to take a hold of. It doesn't change. You know, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He loved me yesterday, he loves me today, and he will love me forever. Because he's faithful. He doesn't stop loving us. He doesn't give up on us. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. Verses 3 and 4. This is good old Moses. At the end of his life, he writes a song. Hey, I love this song. Ascribe greatness to the God our rock. His work is perfect and all his ways are just. A God of faithfulness without injustice. Good and upright is he. And just even that connection, a God of faithfulness without injustice. I think the fact that God is faithful to me is, is inseparable from the fact that God is just. Yeah? Uh, I was thinking when I prepared this message, sort of a random side note. You know, God is not necessarily fair. Eh? Justice and fairness are two different things. So, for instance, in a time of offering, somebody might need $10, and somebody else might need $1,000, yeah? Now, God is committed to provide for people, but He will give one person maybe $10 because that's what they need, 
and he will give another person a thousand dollars because that's what they need. He doesn't give both a thousand dollars. Yeah, and that's not because God is not fair. God is just. Yeah, God, God gives us what we need, and and those two are not to be uh, mixed up in that sense. God is incredibly just, and to me, it's very strongly connected to His faithfulness that He is faithful to every person. Yeah, and He follows that through. Uh, in incredible ways. And you look at it, you know, the people of Israel. Was God, was God faithful to Israel? Absolutely. He was absolutely faithful to Israel. But he was also just, wasn't he? Because I think about the story of Israel. Way back in Genesis, God says, I, I'm going to send you to this promised land. Now, there were already people living in the promised land. Now, was God more favorable to the one than he was to the other? Uh, I don't necessarily think so to that extent. Because the people that lived in the land were removed from the land because of their, their sin. They were removed because of their sin. God didn't just sort of kick them out and put somebody else in there because they needed a place of land. Yeah? But they were removed because of their sin. And God was faithful to, to Israel. But you see, later on in the journey, when Israel loses their way, what happens to Israel in the promised land? They get removed from the promised land. See, God is just. <laughs> he was very faithful to Israel, yeah, but he was very just too. And there's this aspect that God is incredibly faithful, yeah, but there's this aspect too that he wants us to work with him, that he wants us to cooperate with him. And I think a part of what should happen, yeah, when we experience the faithfulness of God, it should actually transform us into faithful people. Yeah, it should actually transform us into faithful people, people that are steadfast or unchanging in love. Love towards one another. Love towards God, first and foremost. You know, the reason why I do what I do, you know what Paul says in, uh, in one of the letters, it's the love of Christ that compels us. Yeah? To me, it's the faithfulness of God in my life, where he's taken me from and where he's put me, put me down. Yeah, that actually has transformed my life. And I say, you know what? I want to be faithful like that, to the best of my ability. I want to be a faithful person. And so what God is like, that's what we become like. And that, that is really the purpose of God in our lives. And, uh, and so I'm excited about it. I'm excited about God's journey and purposes for us. And as I was preparing, I just got two old songs coming to my mind. Uh, you know, I'm not super old, but I'm not really super young anymore either. And so sometimes you get all the songs coming to mind. Uh, anybody know that song, The Steadfast Love of the Lord Never Ceases? Love that song, yeah? I was asked the worship team to, or the guys over there to put the words off. But uh, just the chorus we need. Here, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Now, that is a description of faithfulness. Steadfast love never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning. And then it goes on. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. But every morning we wake up because of the faithfulness of God. He gives us a new day tomorrow because of his faithfulness. Yeah. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. I love that word. Never. It continues. That's faithfulness. Another song that came to my mind is Faithful One. So unchanging. It's also this good old hymn. But faithful one, so unchanging. Ageless one, you are my rock of peace. Lord of all, I depend on you. I cry out, call out to you again and again. I call out to you again and again. You are my rock in times of trouble. You lift me up when I fall down. All through the storm, your love is the anchor. My hope is in you alone. And I looked at this song and I was thinking, you know, faithful one, of course, so unchanging. Ageless one, you are my rock of peace. But then, Lord of all, I depend on you. And I look back on my own life, and I didn't always do that. You know, there were times that I did not depend on God. You know, and the question is sometimes, who do we depend on? You know, when things are tough, who do we depend on? I call out to you again and again, and the question that I got to my heart, who do, who do we call out to? Yeah, when we need to call out, when things are difficult maybe, and we're looking for a faithful God, who do we call out to? You are my rock in times of trouble. Do we run to him? You know, or what do we run to when we are in trouble? You know, you lift me up 
Do we expect that? Do we expect God to lift us up when we fall? Yeah, His faithfulness wants to lift us up. All through the storm, whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance, His love, His faithful love is the answer. Yeah, and you know, how do we feel in storms? Do we feel alone? Do we feel forsaken? Do we feel isolated? You know, the faithful love of God is with us all through these circumstances. And my hope is in you alone. And, you know, I feel God has been bringing it to my mind a lot. But, you know, if we don't have faith, we can't have hope. You know, and even at the beginning of, of, this, uh, of this evening in worship, you know, we sang about the character of God. If we don't have faith in the character of God, if we don't have faith in the faithfulness of God, we're not going to have hope. Yeah, that things can change, that things can be transformed. And, uh, and for us to have faith in who He says He is, He says that He is the faithful one. We can have faith in that. And, and, and God wants to bring incredible transformation, I believe, you know, in our hearts as it relates to Him being faithful and, and what that actually really means and how that plays out in our life. And just felt tonight to share a short message on the faithfulness of God. But I believe God wants us to rely on His faithfulness. His faithfulness is reliable. You can rely on His faithfulness. He never gives up on us. Yeah? His commitment to us is unprecedented. There is no one that commits to us like God does. And we can believe Him for His word. If He says He looks after us, He will. If He says He will lead us out, He will. Yeah? He is really incredibly faithful. And uh, just hope that tonight, you know, my little message or my little journey, what is just one journey, yeah, in this particular auditorium, uh, encourages you. Uh, to maybe uh, relook at the faithfulness of God or to further cry out to the faithfulness of God or to allow God to bring new revelation of His faithfulness because I believe we all need it and there's different circumstances and seasons in life and to realize that it doesn't matter where we come from. Yeah? That God is into the business of restoring us. He's into the business of taking people like all of us that have made a whole bunch of mistakes at times and to really put us on a course yeah, uh, to bring change to the nations of the earth. Not to just be changed ourselves, but to actually bring change to the nations of the earth. And that's God's faithfulness to us and God's faithfulness to all people. And so thank you for listening to my little message. I'm going to give it back to Shirley Brandon.